On August 23, 2023, India made a huge leap in space exploration. With its Chandrayaan-3 mission, they became the fourth country to land there and the first to explore the lunar South Pole. In just a few short weeks, the missions Vikram Lander and Pragyan Rover unveiled remarkable findings in a part of the moon previously untouched by human technology. However, the most intriguing event was recorded three days after landing. Chandrayaan-3's Special Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity ILSA, detected something extraordinary, a potential moonquake. These moonquakes, as their name hints, are the moon's version of earthquakes, seismic shivers that ripple across the moon. These lunar quakes are a fascinating phenomenon that has captured the interest of scientists and researchers for decades. This concept isn't new. Moonquakes were first identified during the Apollo missions back in the early 1970s. What makes this event so special is that this might be the first moonquake recorded in over 50 years. Now you might wonder, why is this discovery causing such a stir among scientists? And that's not all. What other secrets did Chandrayaan-3 uncover at the moon's south pole? Lastly, and perhaps most intriguingly, what elusive element or phenomenon did Chandrayaan-3, like its predecessors, fail to detect on the moon's mysterious surface? These questions beckon us into an exciting realm of cosmic discovery and interstellar mysteries waiting to be unraveled. To understand why the Chandrayaan-3 mission was so critical, it's important to know where exactly it landed on the moon. The moon has a near side and a far side. The near side is what we always see from Earth. It's the side that faces us all the time and where all the human moon landings have happened. The far side? That's the part we never see from Earth, because the moon spins at the same speed it orbits around our planet, taking about 27.3 days for one full turn. Now, only one spacecraft has ever touched down on the far side. That's China's Chang'e 4 mission. But Chandrayaan-3? It landed in a spot called the Shiv Shakti Point, about 600 kilometers from the moon's south pole. The spot is 69.3 degrees south and 32.3 degrees east, so it's still on the near side, the part we can see. But here's the catch. Landing there is a huge challenge. First, the terrain there is super tough. The south pole region is packed with massive craters, huge mountains, and crazy slopes. Finding a suitable landing site and to ensure a safe and controlled touchdown is like finding a needle in a haystack. Second, there's the issue of the perpetual darkness. Some parts near the South Pole are almost always in the shadows because of how the moon tilts and the deep craters. The sun barely gets above the horizon, so getting enough sunlight for solar panels is tough. Some areas haven't seen sunlight for over a billion years. Finally, it's insanely cold at the moon's south pole. We're talking about a bone-chilling negative 230 degrees Celsius or negative 382 Fahrenheit during the lunar night. That kind of cold can really mess with the spacecraft's electronics and make it tough to keep everything running. Chandrayaan-3 was designed to last 14 Earth days, which is like one full day on the moon. In these two weeks, the Indian mission has made some significant discoveries on the moon, starting with the moon's atmosphere, or the exosphere, as the scientists call it. It's super thin, almost like a vacuum. Imagine the pressure there is about one trillionth of what we have at the sea level on Earth. Then there's this extra layer, called the ionosphere, right at the top of the exosphere. It gets made by sunlight hitting atoms in the exosphere, the Vikram lander on Chandrayaan-3 did some first-time-ever measurements of the density and temperature of the ionosphere near the South Pole. Turns out, this 100-kilometer-thick layer of electrically charged plasma surrounding the lunar surface near its South Pole is relatively sparse, with the density of electrons per cubic meter varying between 5 million and 30 million. And this density changes over the lunar day. Why does this matter? 
Well, the density of the ionosphere is super important for radio communication. The denser it is, the longer it takes for radio signals to travel through. But since Chandrayaan-3 found the plasma to be quite sparse, it means there wouldn't be much delay. This is great news for future moon missions, or even if people start living there. Furthermore, the lander made an interesting discovery just below the surface of the moon. A temperature probe containing 10 sensors reached 10 centimeters below the surface. What it found about the temperature there is kind of crazy. During the day, the surface of the moon gets pretty hot, about 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. But here's where it gets interesting. As the probe went deeper, just 8 centimeters down, the temperature dropped big time to about negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a huge change of about 70 degrees Celsius in just 8 centimeters below the lunar surface. Such striking temperature variation indicates that the moon's topsoil is a powerful thermal insulator. This further adds to the idea that it can be used to build future habitats for astronauts to shield them from freezing conditions and harmful radiation on the moon. The next notable event occurred on August 26th, three days after the historic landing. The instrument for lunar seismic activity detected a potential moonquake. Quakes on the moon can happen due to three main reasons. The first is an impact event, when meteorites or asteroids hit the moon, creating seismic waves. Then the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Sun can create tidal forces that cause the moon to flex and deform, causing moonquakes. The third reason could be the extreme temperature variations on the surface of the moon, which can lead to thermal stress seismic events. Moonquakes are very different from earthquakes. They can last from a few seconds to as long as an hour. Also, they occur in clusters. This is unprecedented, and it suggests that something is happening inside the moon that is triggering these events. In recent years, scientists have come up with two potential explanations for these vibrations on the moon. One possibility is that the moon is shrinking. As the moon cools, it contracts, which puts stress on the interior. This stress can eventually lead to the formation of cracks and faults, which can then trigger moonquakes. Another possibility is that the moon is being heated up from the inside out. This could be caused by the decay of radioactive elements in the moon's core. If the moon is getting hotter, it could lead to melting and the formation of magma pockets, triggering moonquakes. Scientists are still trying to determine the origin of the seismic event that Chandrayaan-3 detected. It's the first quake detected in over 50 years and could contribute to studying the origin and the interior of the moon. The next big discovery came from the Pragyan rover's laser-induced breakdown spectrometer, or LIBS. To analyze a substance, LIBS fires laser pulses at a sample, which then vaporizes the substance into plasma. The instrument then picks up the light emitted from that plasma and analyzes the wavelengths to determine what elements lie within. LIBS found a bunch of elements like aluminum, calcium, chromium, iron, manganese, oxygen, titanium, and silicon. But the element that really got everyone talking was sulfur. Here's why that's interesting. There's this theory that the moon might have water, and it involves a process called cold trapping. In the super cold, shadowy parts of the moon's polar craters, water vapor could get trapped as ice. When water ice freezes, it can trap tiny bits of other stuff, like sulfur. So, finding sulfur could mean that water ice broke down and released it. Plus, sulfur is often linked to volcanic activity, which is key to understanding the moon's geology and history. Now, no mission has ever detected sulfur at the moon's south pole before, so this is a big deal. But even with all these cool findings, the Pragyan rover didn't find one thing water ice. Back in 2008, India's Chandrayaan-1 mission 
found signs of water or hydroxyl molecules in the polar regions. In 2018, scientists confirmed that there is definitely water ice on the moon's surface. But so far, no direct evidence of this water ice has been found on the surface. So where is this water ice? There are a couple of possibilities. Maybe the Pragyan rover just wasn't in the right spot. The 2018 study showed that ice is patchy and mostly in lunar craters at the South Pole. Or another clue from the Chandrayaan-3 might help. The Chasti payload on the Vikram lander found that just below the surface, the temperature drops a lot, which suggests the soil isn't great at conducting heat. This means the best place to look for water ice might be under the surface, not on it. Chandrayaan-3 was planned to last two weeks or one lunar day. Any contact after that was a bonus, but eventually they couldn't get in touch with the lander and rover anymore. Still, the mission was a huge success. It made a soft landing, collected loads of data, and gave us a closer look at the resource-rich lunar south pole. And the story doesn't end here. India is already working on Chandrayaan-4 with Japan. This next mission will have a lander and rover too, and they'll be heading back to the lunar south pole to try and directly observe that elusive water ice. How exciting is that? <laughs>